This is the most collection of brain power we've had under this roof in a long time. Maybe since the last time we gave out these medals. I have no way to prove that, uh, and I know this crowd likes proof. It's the most exciting thing in the world to be a scientist because you're like a detective. And what I do is try to understand what life is by starting with a very, very simple bacterial cell and understanding the genetic circuitry that controlled a living thing. Doing that, we identified nodes in the circuit and it occurred to us that these might be, in fact, new targets for antibiotics. Biology lives in balance, and biology utilizes renewable resources to create new organisms. If humans could do the same thing, but not to create organisms, to create the materials that we need for our daily lives, then we wouldn't have to pump our riches out of the ground and pollute the environment. So for example, there are microbes out there that take sunlight and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and convert that into more organisms. What if you could do that and program them to make gasoline? That's what I work on at Caltech, and apparently sometimes it works. Imagine I have a yardstick. I can break it up in tentacle pieces, throw away nine, and go from something this big to about something that big. Let me take that remaining object, break it up in tentacle pieces, throw away nine, and get to something about the size of my fingernail. How many times do I have to do that to get to the atom? The answer turns out to be 10. If you did that process about 35 times, there might be something left in the universe. And in fact, that's what string theory is about. We have all kinds of mathematical indications that doing this process 35 times, you find what I like to call the filaments of reality residing there, waiting for us to discover their properties and to tell us a story. In a global economy where the best jobs follow talent, we need to do everything we can to encourage that same kind of passion. Right now, only about a third of undergraduate students are graduating with degrees in science, technology, engineering, and math, areas that will be crucial if we expect to compete for the jobs of the future. I think what I enjoy most in teaching my students and working with my graduate students and postdocs is getting them to understand the passion that we all feel when we do science and technology. One of the great pleasures of doing what I do is that you get to the chance to do something that is just a piece of magic. And so we have to try to figure out how do we convey that to the public. I think it's a, just a marvelous career. I can't believe that anybody actually pays me to do this. I get to play every day with these amazing microorganisms, with DNA, with biology, and then I get to use it to solve real problems. We can make it easier for our young people to learn the skills of the future. We can attract the brightest minds to our shore. We can celebrate and lift up and spotlight researchers and scientists like the ones here today. So that somewhere, a boy on an army base, or a girl looking through a telescope, or a young scientist working out of a converted bathroom, can make it their goal to stand where these honorees will be standing when they receive their medals.